Alright, so I'm going to be talking about my journey to optimize a piece of code I had written a few weeks ago, um, and um, it plays into our DDoS protection, um, and it required to do um, quite a few requests per second per core because of our traffic. Um, this is not going to be about how we do DDoS protection, um, but this is going to be about how I optimize the code. And um, it, it mostly started um, as my first project as a joint cloudflare, so I was pretty excited. Um, it's a layer 7 DDoS attack protection, um, so um, our goal is to not let botnet traffic through our cloud and protect the origin. Um, so just as a reminder, layer 7 is the application layer, that's the HTTP layer. Um, and um, the component I'm going to be focusing on is uh, going to be about the heavy hitters part where, where you identify heavy hitters and, and then you take some action. Um, but before I get started with that, um, this is one attack we saw recently. Uh, this is, these are the user agent strings and the number of requests they were making from the same IP. So uh, either there were many clients behind the same IP doing about the same number of requests for everyone equally, as you see. The distribution is pretty uniform, which is suspicious. And one of the user agent strings is uh, is n not a well-known string that seems incorrect. Um, but what makes well, well, one way to be very certain about um, if it was a bot or a human being is to see the referrer there. The referrer actually. Um, that's a misspelling that happens to be part of the spec because the Unix um, the dictionaries did not have the correct spelling in them, or any spelling rather. Um, but so so as you guys are familiar, refer is uh, is a field in the HTTP headers uh, which tells the uh, destination site what URL you came from, and uh, uh, so it should clearly be a URL. Um, but as you can see, the red ones are junk, and it was uh, pr probably the bot that some probably the bot that was written was not um, carefully done. So that's junk. Anyway, so what's the architecture of this thing? Um, um, so we have lots of computers on the edges, and uh, from all over the world, they send log data to our Kafka cluster. Uh, that's millions of requests per second. Um, and from that Kafka cl cluster, there are many different consumers which consume data and process it and take uh, different actions. So one of them is the gray list, which is the gray cluster. And um, so it reads millions of requests per second from Kafka and, um, and then does some state coordination with, uh, with one server. Um, so uh, the request per second there, I'm calling that Lambda, and that's, uh, that's something in our hands. Um, so the goal is to have that be manageable. Um, so one obvious way to have that is just have a low, low lambda there. Um, so, so you keep track of say the top k uh, heavy hitters, and and because anything below that that is um, nonsense, so you don't keep track of it. Uh, that way you reduce the coordination effort that's required between different instances of the gray lister. Um, yeah, and that was a design on, on the high level. Um, so how do we find, out of the stream of um, incoming requests, how do you find like the, who are the heavy hitters? Turns out there's an algorithm called space saving algorithm, which is a online algorithm, and um, um, it, it, it happens to be pretty good for most cases. And, so, and a fellow Gopher at uh, Cloudflare had already implemented this as a library in Go. So I was like, um, this is perfect. Um, um, go, uh, let's just implement, just use this and uh, see how it goes. So I did that. And, and uh, so what's next? Then I had to benchmark it. So um, how do you benchmark stuff? You write a benchmark test. Uh, benchmark tests start with uh, bench uh, something and they take a testing.b pointer to testing.b instance, and um, on that instance you have b.n, and is the number of times that's, that test is gonna be run, so you, you're supposed to uh, do what you're benchmarking n times. Um, and there's like more details on how to do this. Um, Dave has a good blog post, and he's pretty awesome, so uh, uh, 
that, you should go read that if you want more details. Um, what were the results? It was doing about 3,000 requests per second per core, which was not going to fly. Albert would never let me put that in production, not keep up. Um, uh, so why was it slow? Uh, so you do, <coughs> uh, you want to see what the CPU is doing because it was, um, the gorilla was CPU bound. So you can have, a, uh, you can use the same Go test tool to run the benchmark and output the CPU profile for that. It also creates a, a binary for the test file which has the relevant symbols to use pprof to um, map things out and where time is being spent. So where was the time being spent? Um, that's part of the output I got. It was all external code mostly, 90%, but, and um, when the profiler does not understand what code is being called, it, it calls it external code, uh, which seemed uh, pretty bullshit. So, um, turns out it was because I was using a virtual CPU, I was using VirtualBox, and they do not work well. Uh, well, at least I couldn't figure out how to get the VirtualBox CPU to act like, a, like pretend to be a real CPU. Um, but uh, VMware does that. That check mark at the bottom of the field that says, um, th that promises to not break modern code profiling applications. Um, you need to turn that on before you boot the machine and, and <laughs> yeah. Um, and then your profiler is gonna work. Um, so what did the real CPU profile say? Um, so most of the time was being spent in copying memory around, and um, uh, that, so that had to be optimized. Uh, one way to do that is to copy less of things. Um, so pointers to strings work way faster than copying the string along, and, and the space-saving library was keeping elements sorted uh, using like an array. Um, and like a simple insert, so it was. It was um, in worst case, it's order n, and if it used like a priority queue, it would be worst case uh, order log n. Uh, just to visualize that, um, as on the x-axis, as the input size grows, uh, the y-axis is where the time is spent. Um, a, the, the dark line is the log n, and um, uh, that behaves much more friendly to you than order n. Um, this is not a graph, just to point out, this is not a graph from production, this is just a graph I built, uh, I, I plotted off order n and log n stuff, <laughs> just the same. Um, yeah, so that was like one improvement that could be done, and, and the first pass of optimization involved basically copying pointers and just reducing the number of times you do copying, so that would, uh, that turns out to be pretty awesome, and it, it took me to 75 requests per second per core. Um, so it was, um, I was really excited, I was really happy. Uh, turns out the output was wrong. <laughs> uh, so so uh, the, the processing rate was like approaching workable, it was not yet workable, and now like I had this junk output. Um, so why was that? Uh, turns out, again, this is not production, distribution, but the distribution looks like this. It's like long tail, there are like few heavy hitters and most of them are like not hitting much. Um, so um, uh, so the, uh, I should have read the paper properly. That's one lesson I learned. <laughs> Always read your papers properly. Turns out the streaming algorithm, like most streaming algorithms, it, out, it was an estimate algorithm and um, for our distribution it just fails. Um, so went back to the drawing board uh, decided to do like a, like just follow a naive approach. Um, why not just keep a map of all things you see, like, and, and swap things out, obviously. Um, there is no second one, it was just, just that. And um, um, we, so he, here is when uh, back of the envelope calculations really help. You should like uh, get in the habit to do that. and. Um, Turns out it's not gonna exhaust all our memory, like not even close, so it was fine. Um, yeah. So how do you find the top K from this map then? Um, uh, the two, um, the first two things that come to mind is like uh, using sorting and, and sort things. Uh, most, most implementations of sorting things use quicksort, and on average it takes uh, order n log n. Uh, 
or you could use quick select that finds the kth value in the set it's um, and that's auto run um, um, so again for visualization the dark is n log n and the lighter one is auto run um, they do not deviate that much um, it's pretty okay uh, but they do deviate um, as the request as, as the set as as the n increases so in, so instead of implementing quick sort, uh, sorry, quick select, um, I decided to just use the sort, and uh, for that you could reduce the data set. So if you go back to our distribution, uh, there are like ultra low values, which are obviously uh, th there's. It's almost impossible that they are going to contribute to be the top k heavy hitter. So you um, prune all the prune the map of ultra low values. So now you have a manageable set of values, and and you just use the standard library sort. Um, that that actually was a correct that that resulted in correct output and um, it did like 120 requests per second per core. So what's the next step? Next step was to test in production, obviously. Um, but more like this: um, key palm and test in production. I clearly did not test the image before. Um, but run it in like a dark mode where you have no side effects. It's taking production traffic. You see how it's doing, um, but but you are not affecting the rest of the system. So, and which was turns out that was a good thing, I guess. Um, uh, it it wasn't fast enough. I had not accounted for like when there are attacks during peak loads. It, the peak loads is even higher, and then um, uh, it needed to be faster. Uh, so I could either go back and profile things, fix my benchmark test, and um, um, and have the benchmark produce output that's closer to production. Uh, but the thing was already running, and I didn't have any, any hooks in it to get like a CPU profile while it's running. Um, so um, hello, perftop. It's a perftop. Perf is like um, it, it's a really nice. Uh, utility that's gonna perf top is gonna give you like um, uh, it's gonna display a top like output. It's gonna show you your hottest functions in the process, and um, you can find it on like Linux tools on like a Debian uh, on, on Debian and I think other things as well, obviously. Um, so this is the uh, this is the final perf top. I was lazy. I didn't go back to do with the old one, but in the old one, what what produced. Uh, um, the most time was spent in handling garbage. The garbage collector was kicking in a lot, and uh, the reason for that is because a bunch of string manipulation was going on, like encoding information into like a string and then decoding it when you are analyzing it again. And, um, and the reason I was doing that bec was because you can't use like slices, and there were other data structures um, in as keys in maps. So instead. Um, uh, I moved to like I moved to using a struct that involved that could be used as a key in a map, and uh, slices were converted to arrays. Uh, that was like that was the biggest speed up I uh, I experienced, which did take me to 480 requests per second per core. Um, it was good enough um, for multiple. Uh, if if the production load uh, is uh, it can handle a multiple of the production load, which is um, what you sh should plan for anyway. Um, I can, I'm happy to sh play around with the final map, but on, on, the, on the left side, what you see is Sarama, which is a Kafka Go client, which produces a lot, lot of garbage. So if anyone out there is looking for like a fun Go project, you could probably do a uh, less garbage producing Kafka library and we'll be re really happy. Um, um, but as you notice, uh, it's mostly all the boxes are, and there's no obvious big box except like the few text, I guess. And um, and uh, so it was no no low hanging fruit anymore, and it was good for production. So um, that was good. What were my takeaways from this whole experience? Start simple. I did not start simple. I start like let's use a fancy algorithm. Uh, <laughs> do not do that if you don't need to. Uh, benchmark things. Profile things. Verify for correctness. That's very important. Tests are correct, but like uh, you should always verify co for correctness. Um, uh, eventually, and back of the animal calculations are always helpful. Um, uh, this was put in production, um, and later we did 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 do some um, changes to the algorithms. Um, we used some log-free algorithms, so the 
Um, a few text boxes, much smaller now. Which, um, yep, and uh, that's kind of it, I think. Um, we are hiring. Um, uh, you should join Cloudflare. <laughs> um, special thanks to Albert, who's here in the audience. You want to say hi? Uh, you should bug him with the tough questions. Um, and Stefan, who also helped me, he's not here, I think. Um, yeah, that's it. I'll take all easy questions, and you can find me on the internet. So what was the nature of the struct that you ended up using as a cache key, translating uh, an array, or a slice, I guess, into a struct? How did you do that? Um, what was the data structure that was uh, not out of the box fit for nmap? Um, it involves IPs and other things, and IPs are a, a, is basically behind the scenes a slice. Um, and there are other some that's some of the things you need to do, like IPv6. All the uh, bottom 64 bits are not they are free for the client to set. So you only want to keep track of the top 64, higher 64 bits, and things like those. So um, instead, we just had like them at raw byte array. Yeah. Yes, you. So um, the, uh, the compiler should these days actually recognize if you do uh, uh, convert a byte slice into a string as part of a map. You should recognize that and not pay the overhead of actually making a string on it. Um, that went in at some point. That was not kind of the only thing, though. There was, it was a string. It was like a custom encoding. It had like a bunch of information. I was creating strings. And, if, if you yeah. manipulate it, it is a different story. Or if you just have a byte slice that you really want to use as a map, Yeah. Any more questions? Um, uh, that was uh, that code is no longer being used. That was like part of the other library. Um, it was to keep things sorted, and that was required as part of the sa space saving algorithm. Um, yeah. Uh, now we run it on the servers and we actually take it from the real machine, yeah. Right. Oh. Do you see the uh, real hardware is comparable to what results you're getting from the VM? Uh, yeah, there were like huge boxes before that was spending a lot of garbage. It, even if it was like 5% error, it was still big enough to fix. So that was fine. All right, thank you everyone. <laughs>